everybody, welcome, happy that you could all join me. So today we're going to be talking about Live View and beyond. We'll be building out some real-time features with not just Live View, but also PubSub presence and kind of channels. So full disclosure, I worked, you know, obviously very hard on this beautiful presentation for many weeks, very proud of it. And uh, yesterday I was teaching uh, another workshop having to do with real-time Phoenix and Live View and a very helpful attendee who had gone to the Live View workshop the day before clued me into some new features that are now available now that Live View is released as of like, I don't know, 27 hours ago or something. So we're going to look at some cool things you can do with Live View. We're going to look at something that you really don't ever have to do and probably will agree that you should never have to do this. And then I'll show you some of the cool shiny new. Uh, OK, let's get started. Before we dive in, I would love to introduce myself. Uh, I'm Sophie, I'm an engineer and teacher at the Flatiron School where I build business and education tools in Elixir, but also Ruby and JavaScript, all that good stuff. I am also a contributor to Elixir School, which is a free open source Elixir curriculum. And you guys have maybe landed on some of our lessons or blog posts. Um, we're really just sort of like a big group of people around the world that want to build up the resources for this community. So certainly would love to have anybody get involved. Check out elixirschool.com, open an issue, write an article, write a lesson. Um, let's spread this knowledge around a little bit. One more introduction. This is my dog. Uh, you might see some more pictures of him throughout this presentation. He is this cute in real life. All right. so. Live View is great. I think if you're in this room, you probably don't need more convincing. You've either played around with it, perhaps at a workshop this week or prior to showing up at the conference. You're excited enough about it to have decided to sit with me in this windowless room on this beautiful day. So Live View has given us the ability to implement flexible and responsive UIs almost entirely with server-side code and really not that many lines of server-side code on top of that. We can build things like complicated games, we can handle form validations, do autocomplete, push out user notifications, and even more. And we can back it with the concurrency and the fault tolerances, uh, fault tolerance of Elixir processes. But Live View has its limits, or at least it seems to. So as we use Live View for more and more real-time features, I think we're going to find ourselves naturally reaching for the other real-time functionality that Phoenix has promised us. For example, user tracking and message broadcasting. So with this in mind, I asked myself a question. I wanted to know if something like a chat application, which is like the traditional go-to example for Phoenix channels, is something like a chat application therefore not a good candidate for Live View? When building a set of features that require things like user tracking and broadcasted messages, do we need to eschew Live View and return to channels? Do we incorporate Live View onto a page that's like already supported by channels or some of these other technologies? So I think the answer to this question is no. I think Live View can do a lot more. Thanks to the flexibility of Phoenix's real-time tooling, it's really easy for us to incorporate PubSub presence and even more technologies directly into our Live Views. So we can continue to use Live View to build lightweight, interactive, real-time features, and we can continue to enjoy all the rich, out-of-the-box capabilities that tools like Phoenix Channels and Presence lend us. So in this talk, we are going to be building out a chat app that is backed entirely by a supercharged Live View that incorporates PubSub presence and a custom Live View channel. And then we're going to totally trash the Live View channel, and I'm going to show you the right way to do it as of like yesterday. Surprise, I'm fine with it. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the features that we're going to build out today. Uh, we will have, of course, the most important feature of any chat application is real-time messaging. All the users in a chat room should be able to see new messages sent by any other present user. 
We'll have some user tracking. Uh, the chat room will display a list of users who are there. And we'll also have a really responsive UI. So what should happen in our chat window when a new message arrives and gets appended to the bottom of the chat log? The window should scroll down. That new message should be in focus. It's kind of like a given of any really useful chat application. So we're going to dive into the very first set of features for our chat application, the most basic functionality that a chat app requires, the ability to show all of the users in the chat any new messages. So before we talk about broadcasting messages, I want to take a look at what LiveView provides us out of the box and discuss why we even need to implement message broadcasting from LiveView. So let's start by running through how this out-of-the-box live view enacts real-time updates for the single user represented by that live view process. So live view will receive a message when a user submits a new chat in the new chat form. Uh, live view will update its own socket assigns and it'll re-render the LEEX template accordingly. We need to understand that this occurs within the live view process belonging to the user that submitted that new message only. Let's take a look at what this means from a UX point of view. Really not good. Uh, this is why we need message broadcasting. So in two side-by-side -side chat windows, open by two different users, having a perfectly normal conversation about my dog, uh, we can really see the problem, right? Only the person that sent the message sees the new message properly, in, uh, sees the new message at all at the bottom of the chat window. So we need a way to ensure that the other live view processes representing the other users in the chat room can become aware of these new messages and can update their own templates accordingly. So in other words, we need PubSub. And this might be the first point in time when reaching for Phoenix channels might feel like the move, but wouldn't it be nice if we could get our existing live view to just broadcast updates to all of the other live view users? Uh, and we can use Phoenix PubSub to do exactly that. Uh, one thing that I always like to note is that PubSub takes advantage of distributed Elixir, so clients across distributed nodes in our app can subscribe to a shared topic, and they can broadcast to that shared topic because PubSub can exchange notifications between servers directly when configured to use the PG2 adapter, which it is configured to use out of the box in any new Phoenix app. Um, okay, so how are we going to use PubSub to make sure that all the users in a given chat room get any new messages? I want to break down the procedure that we're going to be taking a look at. So when a live view process starts up for a given user, that's when we want to subscribe it to that particular chat room's topic. Then when a user submits a new chat message, that user's live view process should broadcast that message to the other chat room subscribers. Those subscribers will receive the new message and they'll update their own socket.assigns and re-render their templates accordingly. And in this way, we can combine the real-time capability provided by LiveView with the ability to pass messages across a distributed set of clients provided by PubSub. So uh, the first thing I want to do is just peek at our application's PubSub configuration. You get this for free with any new uh, Phoenix app. You don't have to do this configuration yourself, but I think it's worth taking a look at. So what we're doing here is we see that our app's endpoint is configured with the Phoenix PubSub PG2 adapter, so it's distribution friendly. That's good. Uh, and it also means that our PubSub backend will start up when the app starts, and it will expose its function via our app's endpoint module. So now that we are assured that our PubSub server will be up and running and that we can interact with it via our endpoint module, let's teach our live view processes to subscribe to a shared chat room topic. So when should a live view process start subscribing to a chat room topic? I think it should happen as soon as the process starts up. So we're going to leverage the live views mount function to hook into this moment in time. Uh, in the mount function, we will subscribe to the chat room topic, which we're just specifying as chat colon chat ID, via the PubSub subscribe three function. So that's really it. Now all of our live view processes, when they mount, are going to subscribe to this chat room topic, and we're ready to start broadcasting messages. All right, so when should we broadcast message? We should do it when a user submits the form for a new chat message. And any such event, thanks to a uh, Phoenix submit event that I've added to the chat room form, it's going to be handled by a handle event three function 
on the server side in our live view process. So we're going to plug into this handle event three function uh, and use it to do the work of updating the chat with the new message record. Then we're going to use the endpoint uh, broadcast three function to broadcast out this message to all of the other live view processes that are subscribed to this chat room topic. If we're gonna broadcast, we need a handle info that listens for and knows how to handle an event of type new message. So we'll do that now. We implement a handle info to function, matches our event type of new message. All the other subscribing live view processes are going to receive this event broadcast, handle it with the handle info, and respond by updating their own socket assigns with the payload describing the updated chat, which will cause the page to re-render uh, including the new message at the bottom of the chat log. So before we move on, I just kind of want to walk through each particular step. In step one, a user submits that new chat message, sending an event to its own live view process. That live view process will receive the message, make some change, and then broadcast it to all the other live views subscribed to that chat room topic. All those other live view processes are going to receive that message broadcast, update their own state, and re-render accordingly, which is pretty cool. All right, so what did this approach win us? The Phoenix PubSub library allowed us to build a real-time feature that broadcasts shared updates to a set of users with just a few additional lines of code on top of our live view. Our Phoenix app was already configured to use PubSub. It already had the PubSub backend up and running, and integrating it with our existing live view code was pretty trivial. And now we have an even more advanced real-time functionality up and running in just about no time. So this brings us to our next feature. Now that our live view is smart enough to broadcast messages to all of the users in the chat room, let's build a feature that tracks those users. So let's say that we want our chat room template to render a list of users who are present, something like this. We have a couple of options here. We could create our own data structure for tracking user presence, maybe reach for like a gen server, an agent, roll all of our own functionality for storing user presence information in there, fetching it out, rely on PubSub again directly to broadcast out presence-related events to all the live views. Um, that sounds like a lot of work, and I don't want to do it. So I think we need Phoenix Presence. The Phoenix presence behavior abstracts all of this hard work away for us. It provides presence tracking for processes. It leverages Phoenix PubSub behind the scenes to broadcast updates. And uh, it also uses something called a CRDT, which stands for Conflict-Free Replicated Data Type Module, which means that it is distributed, it is resilient, it is fault tolerant. Okay, so first thing we need to do is configure our app to actually use Phoenix Presence. We need to define a module that uses the presence behavior and specifies that it shares a PubSub server with the rest of our application. And this shared PubSub server is really critical. This is what allows us to integrate live view and presence really nicely and really easily because they share a PubSub server. Presence will be able to broadcast events that our live view processes can actually consume. Uh, so our presence module is going to maintain a list of present users in a given chat room by storing these users under a specific chat room topic. Once again, in our case, chat colon chat ID. And now we're ready to actually start tracking these user presences. So we need to ask the question, at what time do we consider a user to be present in a chat room? And I would say once again, it's when the user first mounts their live view. So we'll hook again into this mount to function to add the new user to presence's list of users in a given chat room. Here we're using the presence track for function to track our live view process as a presence. So we add the PID of the live view process to presence's data store, along with a payload describing the new user under this topic of chat colon chat ID and a key of the user's ID. So the presence process's state for a given chat room topic is now gonna look something like this. This describes a single user. We have that top level key of user ID and we have the payload stored in metadata describing their email and their first name. And we'll be able to use the data in this list to render our present users on the page. Uh, so let's talk about how we will render those users on the page. How can we ensure that the other live view processes representing users in chat rooms become aware of a new user joining? When a user joins, we're storing them in presence, that's great, but how do we tell the other live views? How do we make sure it gets rendered on the page? So when a user is tracked by the call to presence track four, presence will update its list of users for the given topic, and then for you for free, it will broadcast a presence diff event. 
Recall that all of our live view processes use PubSub to subscribe to the same chat room topic when the live view mounts. Since Presence is tracking users under this topic and Presence shares a PubSub server with the rest of our application, when Presence broadcasts the Presence diff event, that event is going to be consumed by our live view processes. So all we need to do is teach those processes how to handle this Presence diff event broadcast with a handle info function. We'll implement a handle info function that listens for the presence diff event. This function has a couple of responsibilities. The first thing it needs to do is fetch the list of updated users from presence, which we'll do with a call to presence list one. We're saying, hey, presence, give me all of the tracked presences for this topic. Then we're simply enumerating over the payload that we get back from presence list, plucking out the usernames so that we can update socket state giving our socket assigns a key of users pointing to a value of this list of usernames, which means that our users can now be rendered on the template. Having added a key of users to our live view socket assigns, we can access our list of users via the at users assignments in our LEEX template and actually render them. That's it. But wait, we might have a problem. So the code we have so far will broadcast an event when a new user joins the chat room. And this will cause all of the subscribing live view processes, in other words, all the people that were already there, to receive this event, grab the list of users, and then show that updated list on the page. So again, we're really talking about people that are already in the chat room having to wait for a new user to join before any users are displayed. Uh, we need to make sure that we display a list of the people that are already in the chat room for that person that is joining the very first time their template renders. And we're going to do this by fetching the presence list when the live view mounts. So first we'll grab our list of present users for the chat room topic. We're using that same snippet we used earlier to enumerate over them and collect the usernames. Uh, then we will add it to the socket.assigns so that they show up when the template first renders for our newly joined users. Pretty cool. And once again, we're not having to write a lot of code because presence does a lot of this for us and plugs into live view really nicely. All right, so we've talked about a user joining. What about when a user leaves? How can we update present state and broadcast changes when a user leaves the chat room? So recall that we are tracking presence for a given live view process via the presence track for function, where the first argument we give to track for is the PID of the live view process. So what do we think happens when a user navigates away from a live view page? Unsurprisingly, the live view process terminates. And what does presence do when one of its tracked processes dies? It will call untrack3 function under the hood. It will remove that tracked presence from its own state, and it will broadcast a presence diff event, which our live views already know how to handle by grabbing the most up-to-date list of users from presence, which now will not include the person that just left, uh, updating socket assigns and causing the page to re-render. So we don't have to write a single additional line of code to support users leaving and having that list on the sidebar update in real time. All right, before I move on, I want to just briefly touch on some of the other things that you could do by integrating Presence in LiveView. So now that Presence is working really nicely with our LiveView, you could really imagine using it to track not just whether or not a given user is present in a chat room, but also the state of a particular user. So you could leverage Presence to back a feature that indicates which user is currently typing, uh, how long a given user has been active for, if somebody sets themselves to away or mutes notifications, and the list goes on. Any such feature would seamlessly integrate into our live view thanks to live view and presence's shared pub sub server and topic. So live view and pub sub and presence all play really nicely together. And I want to recap what we've built so far before we move on. So with our out of the box live view, our chat had the ability to push these real time updates down to only the user that initiated the change. But with the addition of PubSub, we were able to broadcast new chat messages to all of our live view clients for a chat room topic. And then by pulling in presence, we were able to track and display a list of users present in a given chat room in real time. So the flexibility of PubSub made it really easy to subscribe all of our running live view processes to the same topic on the PubSub server. And the presence module's ability to share that PubSub server with the rest of our app allowed presence to broadcast events to live view processes. So overall, LiveView, PubSub, and Presence, 
definitely get along, uh, and it enabled us to build a really robust set of features with very little hand-rolled code. Okay, this brings us to the last feature that we'll build. And before I make a case for doing something really weird with Live View, and then disprove my own case by showing you that you never need to do it, uh, I wanna talk about a problem that we have. In the current state of the world, when a new chat message is appended to the bottom of the chat window, it appears just out of frame. We need the chat window to scroll down to accommodate and focus on and display the new message. And this is really easy to do with just one or two lines of JavaScript. All we would have to do is grab the new height of the chat window and reset the scroll top attribute. Uh, if you're familiar with Phoenix channels, you might want to reach for something like this have your channel client on the front end listening for something like a new message event and respond by grabbing the chat window element and adjusting the scroll top. That would be really nice. You can't do that. Sorry, not with LiveView. Uh, but we do have some options. So this gets into what I was touching on earlier. Uh, before, I don't know, last week or a day ago, reports vary, uh, responding to a custom LiveView event on the front end was not quite impossible, but it was, it was pretty close to impossible. The Live View JavaScript library at the time did not expose a way for us to hook into specific events on the front end. So the first version of this presentation was created before the recent introduction of Live View and JavaScript interoperability with the help of something called Live View Hooks. And we are definitely gonna talk about what that means and how to leverage it. Uh, but I, I would be remiss if I didn't first show you a weird and complicated thing I did before these existed. All right, so we're gonna write a lot of cool and ultimately unnecessary code. Then I'll show you the shiny new easy way to get our custom JavaScript uh, scroll top firing. But uh, first, travel back with me in time to a week ago when I lived in blissful ignorance of live view hooks. And let's assume that we really want just a little bit of channel functionality. We don't want to abandon our live view and all of the awesome real-time features it allowed us to build out with like very little work. We're developers, we're lazy, we love things that allow us to do very little work. So is it possible? Can we get just a little bit of channel functionality, just enough to fire our tiny snippet of JS? And we can because it actually is possible to roll our own custom live view channel. And this way we'll get exactly what we want, a responsive UI that scrolls down to accommodate new chat messages without departing from the world of Live View. So here's an overview of the setup that we're going for. Each Live View process is gonna get its very own sidecar channel. This channel will be joined over the Live View socket when Live View first renders the template. And then later, when a user submits a message, we will have Live View send a message to its sidecar channel, which will in turn push it down to the front end client, which can fire our scroll top adjustment for the chat window. All right, so in order to get this up and running, we need to extend the Live View socket and define a custom channel. We'll need to register our channel process so that its corresponding Live View can look up the PID and send it a message later on. And then we'll need to teach our live views how to send those messages so that the channel can push them down to the front end client. All right, first up, connecting to the socket and joining the channel. So in order to guarantee that a live view process can send a message to the right channel at the right time, we need to have our live views share a socket with their sidecar channel. So let's take a look at the process. What's gonna go down? A user's gonna visit the chat show page. They're gonna point their browser at chat slash ID. The controller will mount the live view and render the static template. Then we'll have our client connect to the live view socket and join a channel on that same socket. Here's a breakdown of the process. We send the initial get request, render static HTML, send that live view socket connect request, and then join a channel over that same socket. But how can our channel and our live view share a socket. They can't. Unless you steal the live socket source code. So you could, <laughs> this is what I did, copy and paste the live socket source code so that you're sort of extending your own. Uh, so I defined a socket module that's a straight up copy of live views live socket module. The only line I added in addition to what was already there uh, is this line with the channel definition where we're mapping the topic of event bus to our soon to be defined custom channel. 
Uh, and then we need to update our app's endpoint module to map the socket mounted at the slash live endpoint to this new custom extended live socket that we just defined. And now that our socket is up and running, we're ready to define our custom channel, which right now is pretty simple. It knows how to handle the join message for the given topic of event bus colon chat ID. And uh, with our socket and our channel defined, let's take a look at that front end code for joining the channel. Um, yep, so right after we call live socket connect, we can establish our channel at event bus plus chat ID, assuming we've plugged the chat ID, let's say off the page somewhere. And uh, this means that we're getting this much closer to being able to run this code, our scroll top adjustment code. All right, so our socket is connected to, our channel is up and running. We're ready to discuss how we get live view to actually communicate or send messages to its sidecar channel. All right, the process is gonna go something like this. So each live view process will send a message to its accompanying channel. The live view channels will push a message to their own front ends, which will allow the front end to update the chat window's scroll top. So, if we need LiveView to send a message to the channel, its own sidecar channel, it needs to know the PID of that channel. We need to give the LiveView process awareness of that PID or some way to look it up somewhere. And we're gonna do this with the help of a registry. We're gonna register our channel process under a key of a unique session UUID that is shared with the LiveView process. This way, LiveView can look up the channel PID and send it a message later on. So in step one, we're going to mount the live view from the controller with a session UUID passed in from the controller. Live view is gonna store this session UUID in its own state and it's gonna encode that UUID into a token that it will render, let's say in a meta tag somewhere on the actual page. Uh, then when the live view socket is connected, we will include in that connection request a param of the encoded token that will pull off the page. This token will then be stored in the channel's representation of the socket so that when the channel is joined, it can pluck out that token, grab the session UUID, and use it to register itself as a process in our session registry under a key of that session UUID. So in order for this to get up and running, we actually need to build a registry. We're gonna use Elixir's native registry module, and it's important to note that the registry module is not distribution friendly. Uh, if you look up a given PID created on one server on a totally different server, it's not gonna to point to the same process. Uh, but since our channel shares a socket with LiveView, it's guaranteed that the LiveView process and the channel process are gonna be running on the same server. So we're good to go in terms of using Elixir's registry. So we'll tell Elixir's registry supervisor to start supervising a registry named session registry when our app starts up. And now we're ready to start thinking about how we're gonna share this session UUID between a live view and a channel. Uh, when the live view mounts from the controller, we will generate the session UUID, we will pass it into the live view so that we can store it in live view state. We're encoding it as a Phoenix token, storing it in socket.assigns so that we can put it on the page. Uh, later, we'll include this token in our socket connect request, uh, which is handled by the connect3 function of our custom extended live socket. We'll grab the token out of params, we'll verify it, uh, we'll decode it to get the session UUID, and we'll store that in the socket so that the channel can register itself when it's joined. Uh, in the channel's join function, we will call register, what is this, arity of three, register three. Uh, we're telling the channel to register itself in the session registry under a key of this unique session UUID that the corresponding live view is storing in its own socket and it's registering its PID in this registry. So now that we're registered, we can actually teach our live view to send a message to its channel. But in order to do that, we need to answer a question. When should a live view process send a message to its channel? And the answer is, this needs to happen after the template re-renders, and here's why. If the channel tells the client to adjust the scroll top before the new message appears, there's nothing to adjust. We're not scrolling down because there's nothing to scroll down on. So how can we ensure this order of operations? And I'm gonna go ahead and answer a question with a question. And uh, this is how many messages can a process work on at a time? This is an easy one, I'll give it to the room. 
One, just one. So we know that a process can only act on one message at a time. So when Live View receives that new chat message broadcast, we will tell it to send a message to itself. That message will hang out in the inbox and wait to be processed. Live View will then finish handling the new chat message broadcast, uh, which means update socket assigns and re-render. Only then will it process that talk to channel message and go ahead and send a message to the channel. So it's gonna look something like this. All the various subscribing live views will receive this broadcast from PubSub, instructing them that a new message has been added to the chat. At this point in time, each live view will send a message to itself that then hangs out waiting in the inbox. Then live view finishes the work it was doing, which was to update socket assigns and re-render the template. Then it can process the message waiting in its inbox, which is telling it to tell the channel something. Then the channel will respond to that message by pushing something down to the client that will fire our custom JavaScript. Okay, we're gonna take a brief look at the code that underlies it, and then I'm gonna finally tell you why you don't need to do this. Um, the amount of code that you need to write compared to what we're doing here is really fun. Okay, so let's start by teaching our live view to send itself a message when it receives this broadcast from PubSub. In the handle info function for our new message event, we're just gonna use a send self and we are sending this send to event bus message. Uh, we will also teach our live views how to handle that message with another handle info function. And what are we gonna do in this handle info function? We need to first look up the channel PID in our registry. So assuming that we decode the token from our socket assigns and get our session UUID out of it, we can use a registry lookup to function to grab the channel PID that's registered under this same UUID. And then we can actually send a message to that channel super easily with another send function, sending to the channel PID some message. We want to teach the channel how to receive that message. So in the channel, we'll have a handle info function for the new message message. All we need to really do here is push it down the socket. We can finally respond to the new message on the front end uh, by firing our scroll top adjustment. Pretty awesome, let's see if this plays. I don't know if it will. So now we should finally see chat messages. This is too slow. We can finally see chat messages actually appear in view for our users as they add them in real time. Pretty good stuff. We're great at this. Yes. Yeah. All of this with only a million lines of code. So we did it, and we feel amazing. We feel as amazing as my dog feels when he is on his way to the park, especially when it's windy out. When it's windy, he gets like invigorated. Um, so we built it, but it was kind of hard. It was super hard. It was a lot of work. So wouldn't it be great if we could hook into live view events on the front end without extending the live view socket, creating a custom channel, building a registry, sharing a session UUID, doing all of these things? This is a rhetorical question because it would obviously be great. So introducing live view hooks. Surprise. Uh, so as I said yesterday, I found out about these. Can you guys tell how fine with it I am? So, I'm very fine with it, obviously. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's talk a little bit about this really cool new feature, Live View and JavaScript interoperability. So we can now leverage JF's lifecycle callbacks to fire custom JavaScript for live view events on the front end. We can listen, for example, for when an element is added, removed, or updated by the server. And this is the full list uh, of things that we can hook into with live view hooks. We're gonna pay particular attention to this updated callback when an element has been updated in the DOM by the server. This is exactly what we care about when our chat window has been updated by uh, live view on the server with the addition of a new chat message. This is when we want our window to scroll down. So by hooking into these callbacks, such as updated, we'll be able to fire some custom JS. You can also, at this point in time, manually push events back up to the live view process on the server. We're not gonna do that right now, but I thought it was pretty awesome and definitely worth mentioning. All right, so how does it work? How can we take advantage of this amazing new feature? 
So easy, so little code. All we have to do is add a Phoenix hook binding to our DOM element, which in our case is our chat window. So we're adding a Phoenix hook with the name of new chat message. Then we need to define a hook object. We've got a hook that matches up for our new chat message. Uh, it implements an updated callback that will fire when the given DOM element, again, in this case, our chat window, is updated by Live View. Uh, and at that time, it will finally fire our scroll top adjustment JS with the help of this dot L, which the hook exposes to us, and it refers to the bound DOM node, once again, the chat window. Uh, the very last thing we need to do is make sure that we pass our hook object to the socket, just like this. So what the Live View uh, JS library is doing under the hood, and I definitely recommend checking out the source code if you're curious, uh, it takes the hooks that you pass in as hooks, it attaches them more or less as event listeners to whatever DOM elements you put a corresponding Phoenix hook uh, binding on. And then when it is enacting, let's say, an update from the server side, it's just going to trigger any callbacks that you defined in your hook object. Uh, pretty, pretty cool. That's it. That's all we have to do. So just kind of reviewing how this process works from end to end with hooks. User submits a new chat message. Live View receives it and broadcasts that message to all the other subscribers. Those subscribing Live Views update their own state via socket assigns and re-render their templates. This means that our new chat message hook will fire, thus invoking our updated callback and finally setting the new scroll top. And we're done. That was all we had to do. Aren't you so glad I did that other thing? I quit. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is very cool. It's a very, very powerful tool. Uh, so I do want to recap what we've built and just kind of bask all together in how awesome it is. So by integrating PubSub, Presence, and ultimately Hooks directly into Live View, we were able to build a full, rich chat application that supported message broadcasting, user tracking, and a highly responsive UI. All of these things that you need uh, to have like a really good chat app and a really good real-time application. Uh, I, think, I think it's obvious that Live View can really do it all. The seeming limits of Live View that were presented by the chat application were surpassed by incorporating available Phoenix Real Times tools. So almost all of our chat functionality is handled in like less than 100 lines of Live View code. And this is as opposed to like all of the channel back and front end code that you might otherwise have had to write. Uh, furthermore, using PubSub to do what PubSub is meant to do, which is broadcast and subscribe to messages, definitely doesn't feel like a misuse of Live View. And layering presence on top of that functionality similarly just feels like a really good fit. So lastly, the recent introduction of Live View hooks makes it really easy to implement any custom JavaScript that we need on the client side. And that's it. Thanks, guys. <laughs>